I'm Brittany Austin and this is how I work it. I'm gonna take you through 24 hours of my wellness and beauty regimen. I work 40 hours a week, 10 hours a day, and I've probably spent about 14 hours a week in the water, at least. I'll have maybe eight rescues in one day on a busy day and I can go a few months without. I'd probably say I've saved at least 500 people. That first time you save a life will mark you for the rest of your life. The best part about my job is saving lives and being on the beach while I do it. It's amazing and it's beautiful and it's stressful and it's hot and it's exhausting. Morning guys, it's about 7 a.m. Before I leave the bed, I do a couple of things. I drink a nice big thermos of water. I usually leave it next to my bed. It gives me a good excuse to stay an extra five minutes. <laughs> In bed. Typically I wake up at least a good hour or two before my shift. I'll usually stretch out my back a little bit and stretch out my hamstrings. Early bird gets the worm right up and at them. I like to wake up and wash my face with warm water. I don't really use any creams or lotions or anything like that early in the morning just because I'm gonna sweat them off. And the more cream to use, the more sweat there is. It drips in your eyes. It's not a good feel. My biggest beauty regimen would be Agua de Rosas, rose water. Gives me a nice little scent. It's supposed to be a good toner, a little bit of hydration. I spray it any and everywhere. I use this in the morning before I go to work, in the tower when I'm super hot and Nikki just to refresh myself, and even at night. Way too hot not to wear this in Miami. And then of course, I brush my teeth. And luckily for me, I've got a little bit of company. Probably one of the best parts of my job is just my uniform. I'm uh, already in a suit. <laughs> I wear no pants, I wear no shoes. And that is a definite plus. So this is my bathing suit drawer. I have literally more suits than shoes. The navy blues are the work suits. All my work suits are Jolin. Jolin is made specifically for the swimmer, the surfer, the triathlete, the lifeguard, those women who do active things in the water. I need support and I need them to stay on and surf. If I'm running out on a rescue, I don't want to have to worry about my boob popping out, you know, which has happened in the, the more Lycra soft, you know, um, bathing suits. And I've been in a rescue, I remember, where I came out and I'm just like, ma'am, ma'am, fix your suit, because she had completely one out. And she looks down at me, she's like, well, honey, you're in the same boat. And I look down and I'm just like, oh, Dios mio. Because I am a lifeguard and I'm constantly in a bathing suit, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, shaving all the time. I did get laser hair removal on my bikini line. It's one of those things that just makes my life a little easier. I get to work at nine, we have morning roll call. I'm here on beautiful Miami Beach. It's about 86 degrees now, which feels about 97 because of the humidity. We open up our towers by 9.30. This gives me about 30 minutes or so to set up, make sure that all my equipment is in good working condition. I wanted to show you my office. Got my amazing view in the background. Got my supervisor there watching the water for me. This is where I'm at, 40 hours a week. I look like I'm camping when I go to the tower because I have everything that I need. Because I don't have running water, I want to be set for the day. It's about 10 o'clock and I have sweated <laughs> again opening up the tower and here I am. I start to get ready and put on a little bit of sunscreen. Sun protection and lifeguarding kind of goes hand in hand. I do not sit in a chair, I sit in an actual tower that has doors and windows that kind of protect me from the elements. So most of the time you see a lifeguard, we're going to be trying to stay away from the sun. As you can see, I've got my sun protection wherever I go. Um, this is my sun buff, my rash guard, my glasses, and my hat. Most of the protective clothing, they all have some kind of UV protection. I go in the water with full tights. Um, to cover my legs as well. I like to use a visor, a hat, and of course, sunglasses. Ocean Rescue gives us a $150 allowance for sunglasses because as a lifeguard, it's super important. I'm not just looking out into the sun, I'm looking out into the ocean. The reflection of the sun off the ocean is actually more harmful. These are my Cosa del Mar. They're made specifically for people who are on the ocean and they're super polarized. It's just something that takes the glare off of the ocean. I can actually see the victim better. You can see the contours of the ocean floor, where the sandbars are, where the rip currents are. I do wear sunblock. What's really important is to make sure that it's reef safe. I love the ocean. 
It's my playground, it's my office, it's where I live, where I work. And for me, protecting the reef is really important. I have this beautiful engagement ring. I'm deathly afraid of losing it, so you won't see me actually wearing rings or bracelets on duty. I usually get a break at around 11 or so a.m. I personally bring my lunch so that I can use my lunch time as a workout. I can't stand staring at the water for 10 hours a day and not being able to get into it. Well, I need to be in peak physical condition. On every given day, I do at least one workout. I vary it up depending on the conditions. If it's a rough day, I'm gonna go out there and do rough water training. If it's a complete flat day, I might take it easy and maybe swim or run. And once I'm done with my workout, the most important thing is to rinse off with fresh water and dry off. So I keep these gallon jugs of fresh water in my tower so that after every workout or after every rescue, I usually rinse off with fresh water. Reason being, salt water dries out your skin. Also, who wants to stay sticky for 10 hours of the day? I never sit in a wet bathing suit more than a few minutes. It's very important for feminine health. Um, I'm not gonna sit here in a wet bathing suit for 10 hours a day, 40 hours a week. So I do change my suit at least two to three times a day depending on my activity levels. It is something that, that maybe normal people don't think about, but lifeguards, it's, it's kind of just key. Lifeguards don't have days where you can just say, I don't wanna go to the beach because I'm on my period. I have, I like to call it my little goodie bag of feminine health items. As soon as I change into a, a, dry, a dry suit, I change into a dry tampon. We can't exactly wear pads. <laughs> we don't have uh, restrooms on the tower, so I use a glove. Glove goes on your hand, pull the tampon inside out, tie it in a knot, throw it in the trash. So one of the things that's very unique to lifeguards is that we're constantly in humidity. Keeping dry is important. And the most important thing as far as uh, hair care is just letting it dry before I put it back in a bun. I have heard millions of horror stories from my, my swimmer friends, from my lifeguard friends, that the constant in and out with wet hair and the hair back in a bun or a ponytail, and next thing you know their hair's breaking, it's rotting, it's falling off. This isn't Baywatch. I can't do a rescue with my hair down. I have to keep it up, but I brush my hair out, I let it down, I let it air dry before I put it back in a bun. I've never dyed my hair in my life, all this golden highlights that I've naturally acquired through the sun is basically the sun baking and burning my hair. I don't really use a lot of products, but I do get in the ocean every day, so I do wash my hair every day. I condition my hair every day. I just use the normal herbal essence. It reminds me of childhood. This one's the coconut one, so it gives me extra moisture. A common problem with lifeguards and swimmers is that we get these, these humidity spots on our shoulders. The best thing that works is dandruff shampoo, as long as you're consistent with it. I like to eat throughout the day. If I sit down and have a very big meal and I'm now full, all of a sudden I have a rescue. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is throw up on my way to the rescue. It just does not feel great. So a lot of times you'll see lifeguards munching throughout the day, eating smaller meals. An example of like one of the things that I like to eat and bring to lunch is what I call chia pudding. It's basically chia seeds, almond milk, some agave nectar, cinnamon, uh, pecans, and I'll put like a banana in it. Mm. Bon appetit. Another thing that's really important is hydrating. I'm in a, basically in a wooden box all day long. There's no AC, it's just in the elements and I'm working outside. This is my gallon water bottle. I drink at least one of these in a day. I have a 10 hour shift, so it usually lasts me through the day. If it's a really hot day, I might have to go back and, uh, and refill. This is what I like to use. It's a little electro pack. I have at least on really hot days, at least one of these a day. Pretty tasty, it's easy to carry around, put in my water bottle good to go. As a professional lifeguard, I have my EMT for my medical uh, response. Most of the time we're first responders on, on the beach, on the sand, in the ocean, so we need to recognize what's going on, what we can do to help. The fact that heat can turn into a major medical condition is very real on Miami Beach. We do get a lot of people with heat exhaustion. I do a lot of medicals on the sand. A lot of people come for spring break or for summer break and they want to party and they want to have fun, but they're not really recognizing what they're putting their body through. It's something that as a lifeguard we have to remind people because they're just coming to have fun and that's <laughs> their health is sometimes not on their radar. There's a lot of myths just because of Baywatch and a lot of other shows, um, The Sandlot. A lot of people think that 
Most lifeguards are seasonal jobs that were all college kids just looking for a summer job. South Florida, specifically Miami Beach, we have the luxury of having great weather all year round. That means you have people in the ocean all year round. There's some people that don't even understand that there's lifeguards. They come up to my towers, they ask me to rent an umbrella. I have a lot of over-eager tourists. Most of them mean well. They want to take pictures, they're excited. And I do have to remind them, my tower is my office and my equipment is the tools that I use to save lives. So I don't mind people taking pictures. However, I do have to remind people Please don't stand on my stairs. I prefer not tackling people as I run out for a rescue. I do keep my nails very short. I'm constantly in the water, so my nails tend to break. Also, I don't want to reach for somebody and scratch them with my nails. A lot of times, people, when you're saving them, they're in a panic. They don't know what's going on. And you'll get everything from people trying to jump on top of you to the, the boyfriend leaving the girlfriend in the back and trying to save himself. It happens, girls. Don't follow them when they tell you. Just a little bit further, if you're not comfortable, you know, when in doubt, don't go out. But I've had occasions where that person just has this glassy-eyed stare, and you get to them, and you thrust the buoy in front of them, and they'll try to climb completely on top of it because they don't recognize that all they need to, to survive is just, just right here. This is all they need out of the water. Sometimes it just takes the, hey, calm down, I'm here. You're going to be okay, grab the buoy. And sometimes that's just enough to like, snap them out of it, and then you can calmly calm down, you start to crack a joke or two. It is interesting, you know, people's reactions. And some, some people say thank you, some people run away from you as fast as they can as soon as they get out of the water because they're super embarrassed. Um, there's certain rescues that kind of stick with you. There's drowning and major medicals, and as any medical provider will tell you, there's certain times where you're not gonna be able to save them. And those things are definitely, um, they're impactful and they're something that once you live through them, it really puts you, puts your passion for the job in perspective. Just the sheer idea of, well, <laughs> I've now lived through the worst and if I still want to do this job and I still want to save more people, then I know that this job is for me. And it's, it's something that you learn from and it's going to happen to every lifeguard in their career at least once. And that happened probably to me probably about the second year of my profession. I had a very, uh, hefty case and when I went home I had Lucas there to help. Lucas is my uh, fiance and he's been with Miami Beach Ocean Rescue for about 15 years. It's actually really awesome to have uh, my significant other do the same thing as I do. We're lifeguards, yeah. we swim, we run, we save lives. We save lives. So I'm very lucky to have met my, uh, my significant other who is very supportive. Here in Miami and as steamy as ever and there's nothing better on a hot day and giving yourself a nice bath. We have this big container and we have our ice machine and we fill it with ice water and we get in there for eight minutes and give ourselves ice baths. We have a clean garbage can and a hose of water. I'm really looking forward to this ice bath. I mean, yes and no, it's gonna hurt. Ooh. It sounds kind of a... Painful, but at the end of the day, as a lifeguard in a hot environment, it's important to stay cool. Only seven minutes to go. Just because the amount of uh, physical activity that we're doing, it's good to kind of help revive and rejuvenate. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Vaseline is a lifeguard's best friend. Salt water is pretty abrasive, so I tend to chafe. And in this case, Vaseline is a lifesaver. As you see, I don't have a thigh gap. <laughs> so Vaseline, put it right here on that chub rub. If I'm gonna go for a long swim, a long row, anywhere around the, the, the swimsuit line. Also, sometimes these rash guards can be cut a little weird, a little tight, just on the underarm is a nice spot as well. Even just a small cut or anything that kind of burns in the salt water, Vaseline will just solve all your problems. A little bit of Vaseline, a little bit of Neosporin, and um, you're good to go. Alcohol is something that all the lifeguard towers have. As a medical professional, it's important to disinfect. We don't have running water, so a lot of the times, guards will just grab a thing of alcohol and just do one of these. Also, you know, I have a pimple. I've got none of my, you know, acne products or anything. Cause pad. Alcohol, straight on the pimple. All right, it is time to reapply with a little bit of SPF 30.
most of my job has to do with preventative actions. Sometimes I'll be down on the sand hours on end, specifically those times before and after low tide uh, on busy holidays as well. Stop. As a lifeguard, we consider having a lot of rescues in the same spot as failure on our part <laughs> because it means that we've not prevented. If I see a rip current at a specific tide two hours before low tide or two hours after low tide and I see a family, I'm definitely going to go down there and redirect them to a safer spot to swim because it could become dangerous. On every lifeguard stand, we have a flag system. This flag system is uh, nationwide. It's green, yellow, red, just like a stop light. Green means that there's low hazard. Hazard. Yellow means moderate hazard. Red just means high hazard due to rip currents. When we fly that double red flag, that means that the water's closed to public. Flying our double red flag for lightning at the moment. It could be lightning, it could be hurricane surf, or any kind of bacteria in the water. And our purple flag is for marine life. Usually in the summertime, moon jellyfish. In the cooler months, it could be Portuguese man o' war. People are really surprised that in the ocean, there's marine life. We get everything from tarpon to manatees to stingrays. We have sea turtles that actually wash up on our shore. Usually at night, the mother sea turtle will come up, lay her nest. Every once in a while, we'll have one of those nests hatch. These baby turtles are very vulnerable to heat. We make sure that those turtles are accounted for. Lifeguards love rainy days. <laughs> we get to kind of have a breather in, take us a moment in the tower to kind of just relax for a bit. Usually around six o'clock, I'll start to close down the tower. I'll start to pick up my cones, put my rescue board away, clean out the tower. I get off the tower at 6.30. We wash the vehicles, put away all our emergency equipment, leave it ready for the next day. And I'm leaving the beach at 7 p.m. At the end of the day, the most refreshing thing is to just walk into the AC. When I get to get out of this heat and I crank the air up like 100 million percent, it's like the cloud automatically lifts and you're like seeing clearly for the first time in like 10 hours. It's intense. Quit in time. Get home by 8, eat by 8.30 and kind of just relax and take a nice long hot shower. <laughs> Obviously my job does not include a full face of makeup. Because I don't get to use uh, makeup on a daily basis, sometimes just to run errands, I like to put on a little bit of a face. <laughs> This is my makeup bag. <laughs> this is pretty much the extent of it. This is just a brush on sunblock. It's a nice kind of sheer powder. I do have very short eyelashes. So I do use an eyelash curler. My aunt and my grandmother used to try to teach me how to curl my eyelashes with a spoon. I was never quite as skilled as they were. I have waterproof mascara because you never know when a girl needs to jump in the ocean. And then I have a basic uh, eyeliner little accent. Aqua four. Oh my gloss. So yeah, that's my daily, like on a day off makeup routine. Just if I'm gonna go out to the store and I wanna look a little pretty and make me feel like I'm a little bit more girly. On special occasions, I do like to break out the really dramatic red lip. I like the deep red matte Milan. Right, um, and like a little trick that my grandmother taught me to make sure I don't get lipstick on my teeth. And now it's out to party. <laughs> One thing about sitting outside in the heat all day is that when I get home, the only thing I wanna do is lock myself inside a dark room and crank up the AC for at least a good two to three hours before I can even move. I have a cream that I use at night. I buy this in Mexico from the market. It's actually made of honey and pollen and a whole bunch of other good things. It's something that I can wear at night and then the next morning, by the time I wash my face, I don't go into my workout feeling like my goggles are slipping off my face. It smells like nature. I do walk in the sand a lot, so my heels tend to get really dried out. And it's something that I'm constantly battling with, trying to file them down. And I use this heel tastic, and I sleep in socks. I tend to go to bed around 11 o'clock and a little bit of a, of a night owl. All right, guys, it's about 11:30, and uh, Rocco and I are about to go to bed. So, good night. Hola, me llamo Brittany Austin, y así es como lo trabajo.